Dassault has been a great partner from the very beginning when we started that company uh, 18 months ago. And uh, they've been following us, they've been supporting us greatly with Katia. And I want to walk through walk you through what we're doing and what we're doing with Katia uh, and what we plan to do with the future of transportation. When I started the company, I, when I came here, what is my motivation? Um, I grew up in East Germany and many of you guys might know that famous, infamous Trabant as uh, the means of transportation in East Germany. And this is how I grew up. And certainly a big part of my motivation lies within being part of that Trabant society. That's where we started. And uh, was a perfect pitch, the presentation before me. Autonomous cars are going to be coming. And that's very certain. And uh, there's a lot of people that believe, and I'm certain about this, autonomous cars make the world safer. But I believe that autonomous cars and traffic jam make an autonomous traffic jam. And there's a lot of people that would agree with that. So people want to sit autonomously in a traffic jam. How do we address, <laughs> how do we address the problem of not having enough capacity on the road? Um, how do we get more ca people, more vehicles, more transportation, more throughput through our infrastructure? And this is why we f founded the company to find a solution to that. Before I get to that, I want to get to a definition of a road. And I looked it up at Oxford Dictionary, and it's a free moving path from A to B between uh, two points. Uh, where on the planet, being at Paris, Los Angeles, New York, Boston, you have that. Humans have used the road to extin extinction. And uh, if you look at how much we actually use the road in terms of capacity, it's astounding. Um, and this is a picture of a traffic jam. And uh, I want to ask the audience, how much do you think is actually used of that road? 20%. 20% of the road is used, not more. And it's still, we're not moving. It gets even worse if we look into uh, how rail is using the infrastructure. The photographer that took that picture must have been sitting there for hours to get those two trains at the same time. We're using it for less than 1%. So we're trying to build a system that is using the infrastructure to 75%. So 75% of the infrastructure is being used permanently, very short headways, electrified, autonomous, safe, and guided. To get you through how we're going to do this, I, I, need to get, I need to get you through some kind of mass exercise I'm sorry for that in the morning. Um, how do we get throughput? How do we calculate throughput? It's somewhat a function of how many vehicles do I have on the road per time unit. So it's a function of the space between the vehicles and the speed, of course. And the spacing, of course, is the length of the vehicle, size of the vehicle, and the gap between the vehicles. So it's kind of the efficiency over the distance. Doing a little bit of a sensitivity analysis to the throughput of my road or my guideway of my transportation system is dependent on the gap and the speed. More so on the speed, but also on the gap. So we're creating a system that is, has very, very tight headways between the vehicles. That leads to higher throughput, but it leads also to significantly higher energy efficiency, because now we're creating that lazy river uh, of vehicles avoiding aerodynamic drag. Now, people say, like, this is crazy. Vehicles, one, one point, uh, 0 0.1 seconds apart from each other, uh, crazy. How are we going to do this with the safety? And everybody here in the room, I suppose, been to driving school, everybody learning about the se uh, two-second roll at 60 miles an hour, that converts into 175 feet between the vehicles. Two seconds, that's the amount of time between my vehicle and the vehicle in front of me. That gets you six, about 1,600 vehicles per hour per direction on one lane. The way I drive, a little bit reckless, I'm German with a BMW, 
gets a little more. And a fully autonomous freeway gives you about 8,000 vehicles per hour per direction. Now, if we convert, look into uh, how does that look in speed versus throughput, Three o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning, 70 miles an hour, gives you about 2,400 2, vehicles per hour per direction. 9 o'clock in the morning, you're stuck in traffic jam, is a little bit more, but it's significantly slower. The way we want to see our future is with 20,000 vehicles per hour per direction at the speed of 110 miles an hour. Now people think, th those guys are totally crazy. How are they going to do this? So what we're doing, we're flipping the world upside down. Um, we're powering the road. 0 0.1 second between the vehicles, 20,000 vehicles per hour per direction. To understand how we do this, on top of my mass lecture, there's a little physics lecture that's coming up. First of all, uh, talking about a little bit of motor efficiency, um, and now I'm beating myself to the punchline, he's saying it's more efficient. No. 95 versus 96. I have to look at the whole picture. The whole picture looks significantly different. If you look at the whole system efficiency, coming from the grid to having power on the road, power on my vehicle, now we're comparing 60% efficiency from an electrical uh, EV efficiency to our linear motor efficiency. And um, how are we going to do this? And it's a little bit inspired by Back to the Future, and I'm st stolen a little bit there. We're developing technology that combines a linear motor with levitation technology, and that's been in the side guys for a while. Uh, look at Transrapid in Shanghai. Uh, but we're combining this in a way with new means of uh, engineering so that it becomes commercially viable. Ten times cheaper in terms of building it and ten times cheaper in terms of operating it. So it becomes a viable option for uh, transportation in the future. Everybody's asking me, um, everybody's asking me how fast is it going to go? And I said it already, 110 110 miles an hour, um, speed comes at a cost. Uh, it comes at a cost of energy, energy consumption. The power I need to propel a vehicle forward and create forward motion uh, is dependent on the speed. Uh, it's dependent on the speed to the power three. So the faster I go, um, much more energy is needed to propel the vehicle. So we have the saying at the office, um, the system is not speed limited. The system is bad decision limited. So does it make a difference for you if I want to go from Union Station in LA to LAX in 15 minutes reliably and pay five bucks for it? Or I go in eight minutes and I pay 25 bucks for it? So that is the difference. And I think this is a trade-off that we're making in terms of speed and the cost I have to pay for that speed. It is also to go, it is also fun to develop fast. And this is why I'm making my arts to so and the way we um, work together. And this is how we started um, with our first um, prototype, first test rig, uh, the model in Katia, uh, early supported by Dasso. This is how it looks in real um, as the first test rig. This is how the next version of our test rig is going to look like. Uh, and this is the version of the vehicle as we envisage it uh, in full production in two years from now. Maybe a little impression on how that is working. Here I want to end my presentation with a little vision on how we envisage the road of the future with 20,000 vehicles per hour per direction, a Revo powered by Dassault Systems. Thank you, Dean. Thank you, Knut. That was fascinating. You know, 
I love the taste of math and physics for breakfast in the morning, right? It just gets you going. But, uh, you know, it's what Canute just showed you is the power of innovation. And if you've got an idea, Dasso System can help you create it and, and make it come to life. Thank you.